Hello, my name is Brandon Matthews, and this is my Three Worlds presentation. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the literary world. Jesus begins his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. It is one of five long speeches that we can find in the book of Matthew. I think that most people represent this as the way of salvation, or the way to salvation. Um, but I see it as a guiding path to righteous living, uh, to, those, to all those that accept and follow uh, the word of God. This sermon was also an expansion of the spirit of the law, and we can see this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17, 21 through 22, and 27 through 28. For the Jews of Christ's day, this message was a detailed explanation or an explanation of the requirements for entering into the kingdom of God. It is a, something that we can go back to and continue to read and study and dissect. Uh, the literary world is, is still very um, true to, to, to today, and, and it's something, again, that we can go back, and it's a reference to how to live our lives and how to be righteous and, and live in salvation. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the contemporary world. I know most of us will choose this one for last, uh, but I kind of wanted to put it in the middle and, and then talk about it kind of right now. So the contemporary world shows us the word of God and his principles are still appropriate to the children of God today. By learning about the literary and historical worlds, I can start to understand the contemporary world and be able to apply the true message of the world to today's cultural problems. Jesus has helped us and taught us to dive deeper and to seek out the source of sin in our life in an attempt to restore relationships with all those around us. Jesus has taught us to forgive, for it is not our place to judge, but to show compassion and love. If this is not done, we shall pay the cost of our eternal life. With this, within this text of Matthew, we find teachings that can be used in our everyday lives. It teaches us that we must do what is right and that we must keep the law of the God. It shows a path to live of true faith. Even though that path may be filled with many roadblocks and many detours, it still shows us a path to get to, um, for some of us, our, our end result, which is to the kingdom of heaven. Um, or for some of us, it just shows us a, a path to stay on to have good karma um, or to be looked at as, as, a, as a good person around. The last part I chose to talk about <clears throat> is my favorite part, which is the historical world. In Matthew chapter 5, we see that this time in history, there's great poverty and great oppression on the people. There's lots of tension between the poor and the elite, uh, the upper class and the lower class, the, the working class and the upper echelon, if you will. Um, there's lots of tensions between them and, and it's growing worse. There was also another great tension that I was starting to arise, especially coming from um, the poor or lower class citizens. And this was the rise of the following of Jesus Christ, their true Messiah. Um, this did upset the, the, the elders of the, the Jewish faith and the elders of the churches around the town. The Jewish community was controlled by an oral law, and it was a very oppressive law. Uh, if you were not on the, the right side of that, there was no chance for you to get your way nor to get your point or word across. So that's, in that case, I do believe that the main audience for Jesus' sermon was his disciples. And I think that we can see this in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 2. Jesus then would soon after send out his disciples into Israel to preach to the kingdom of heaven. And I think that we can find this, a good example of this, in Matthew in verses 10-1 through 11-1. Jesus at this point is sending his disciples to go out and to contrast the oral law, that is the law of the land at this time. And Jesus and his disciples are using the Old Testament as, as a reference to its province of the kingdom. If you live this path, the kingdom is yours. If you go the opposite way, the kingdom will be taken away from you. Um, always referencing back again to the literary context of the word. If we don't know that the history behind this, we don't know that the literary context is what they used in order to show reference. Um, it is something that, again, today I choose to use. I can open up the Bible and show different verses and different scriptures, along with going to history books and showing the, the connection and the references to, to both. In conclusion, I have learned that only through the three worlds 
can one truly understand the world and teachings of Jesus Christ and our Father God? By seeing the literary world as images or the story that comes to mind when reading it, and combining that again with my favorite part, the historical world, or the world be behind the word. What is going on? Why are these actions taking place? Why is it so important uh, that the people are rising up against um, the laws of the land? We can start to see our contemporary world come to life around us, remembering that we are the world in front of the text. Once all three worlds are examined, can one truly put all the pieces of the great puzzle of the Bible together? <laughs>